Well, good morning. I've been down sick a little bit, you know, time of year. Hadn't made any videos, but this morning I heard something. I guess just a lot of things this morning. I posted a few things, got some replies that kind of ticked me off. And then I got, uh, heard this song, um, and it just prompted me to want to do a video. And that's kind of the way it moves me as I just kind of wait for God to move me. And uh, I'm a little, a little amped up this morning over this, you know, uh, a little angry. Um, but I was trying to be cool. You know, the song was Charlotte Daniels, and what this world needs is a few more rednecks. Well, I listened to that song, and, and it, it had a lot of good stuff in it, you know, but uh, what this world needs is not a few more rednecks. What this world needs is a few more real men, Christian men, you know. See this right here? Look at that. I am not ashamed. See the back side of that? How many men will go out and wear that shirt? Not many. They're afraid of what their friends might think. How many men will take their family's hands at a table in a restaurant, sit down and hold hands and pray with them over their food? That's a real man making a statement. Not ashamed that he's a Christian. And the problem in America is too many men want to be cool. They too cool for Jesus. Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm a Jesus freak. I love him. Love what he's done for me. And uh, what we've done, a lot of us, is put our faith in uh, these these cats up in the pulpit wearing these sick, you know, talking about all this slick willy tongue stuff and putting on these suits and Everybody who thinks that they perfect and they're not perfect. The men, just like I'm a man, they're a man. And yeah, maybe they chose to be preachers. Maybe God called them to be preachers. We don't know, but they can't do it by themselves. Number one, number two, we shouldn't have all our faith in them. Our faith is in God and God called each one of us to come down off our mountain and bear our cross. Now, I made a post this morning about I, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. Well, let me tell you what. For over 40 years, I drank, cussed, drugged, chased women. You don't turn that off overnight. Uh, when you get born again, you're, that don't make you perfect. When you get born again, that makes you different. You don't want to do those things. I don't mean you're not going to slip up once in a while. But that don't mean that you don't feel like you're good enough to talk about God. You know what? If you go to an atheist or a Jehovah Witness or somebody and you try to talk about the Bible, they're going to argue with you about that. And yeah, you aren't a Bible scholar. You don't. You can't argue the Bible with them. Those cats know the Bible. The one thing they cannot argue about is what Jesus did for you. So you get out and you tell your story. You know, when I wear this shirt right here, I want people to come up to me and ask me my story. I want to tell them about Jesus. I want to tell them about how he loved me enough that when I was down on the rock bottom, he picked me up and got me back up on my feet. I want to share that experience with people. You know, when you get born again, and this change comes over you and you don't want to go back to that lifestyle. You don't want to go back to those ways. You don't want to go back to hurting your family and your children. You want to be a blessing to people. You ought to be able to get people around you saved without even opening your mouth. They should see the change in you, the fruit you bear. You know, an apple tree, it don't sit there and say, oh, I got to make an apple. It just makes an apple. It just pops out. It bears that fruit. Once you're saved, you should want to bear the fruit and let people see that and say, man, you sure have changed. What happened? Bow. There you go. There is your foot in the door to tell them about Jesus and tell them what Jesus did for you and how Jesus can turn their life around. 
But the problem in America today is we don't have enough people, men and women, that will stand up and profess the gospel. Don't be ashamed. That's the problem now. That's why the school is being overrun. You know, the Muslims can go in there and teach their stuff. The the Everybody's allowed to go into school and teach their stuff, but the Christians. Because we've gotten silent. We've taken a back seat to everybody else. And they're teaching our children. And that's the future of America. So either step up or step off. Don't complain about it if you ain't going to do something about it. Let your fruit show. If you're truly born again and you're a child of God, men, grow a pair. Go out and tell people about Jesus and how he changed your life. Don't worry about what other people think of you. Don't worry about if your friends think you cool or not. You know what? I don't care what none of my friends say. And if somebody's got a problem with me wearing that shirt, come on up here and talk to me about it. I'm good with it. Let's talk about it. But I'm not going to hide it. And guess what? I'm not perfect. And I'm going to slip up. And you're welcome to call me on it. Whenever you do, I will thank you. Because that's conviction. I had an incident with this shirt on. Right after I got saved. Where I lost my cool. It was road rage. I ain't going to lie about it. I lost my cool. had my family in the car. And uh, some little pencil neck dude in a jacked up big truck thought he was going to intimidate me. And I'm not very easily intimidated, as you could probably tell. And uh, I tried to be cool and I tried to be cool. And he just kept on and he kept on. And he kept pushing me. And I thought about Jesus losing it in the temple. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand today's standard. That would have been premeditated because Jesus stood there and braided the whip before he whipped the people with it. And uh, we all got a breaking point. And I broke. And I jumped out. And this guy decided it wasn't a good idea to try to intimidate me. So he didn't want to get out of the car. Well, the truck. So I began beating on his truck. He still wouldn't get out. I was on Broadway in Nashville, which is the busiest road there is. There was probably 500 people watching me show my butt. And I looked down, and in the reflection of that truck, I saw those words. Yeah, right here. I am not ashamed. Guess what? All of a sudden, I was ashamed. The conviction fell on me so hard and so bad. All I, I started crying. I got back in my car, and I started apologizing to my family. Yeah, I'm not perfect. But you know what? That conviction showed me I had changed. I was born again. The old me wouldn't have cared. The old me would have kept beating that truck, probably beat his window in and pulled him out of that truck. But the new me said, I can't do that. When I saw that, it reminded me, I'm a child of God and I got to carry myself like one. I repented. I asked God for forgiveness. I asked my family forgiveness. And if I knew where this dude was, I'd ask him for forgiveness. Because that's what it's all about. People, we're going to mess up. We're going to mess up our witness when we do. We're going to get knocked down. But it's how fast do we get back up and get on our feet. And get that conviction and repent. That's what it's all about. So men, don't be afraid to step up and tell people you're a Christian. Don't be ashamed to pray with your family in public. Don't be ashamed to tell your friends that you don't desire that lifestyle anymore. Be a real man. Step up and show people with your fruit that you've changed and show people that Christianity built this country and Christianity will continue to be in this country and no matter what the laws change, no matter what the panty waste do, we're going to be here and we're going to be in their face and we're going to let them know Jesus Christ is Lord.
The only way to get to the Father is through the Son. There's no way around it. There's no other way. I'm not saying be a Jesus jerk. I'm saying love people, forgive people, but let your fruit show. Let them know there's a change in your life. All right, I beat this dead horse long enough. Men, be men. Be men of Christ. That's all I got for you. Have a great day. Make it a great day, and God bless you.